We are duck hunting fanatics. Knee deep in the duck blind. If it flies, it dies. Only duck hunting fanatics know what it feels like to see a brightly colored Drake Mallard cup its wings and soar towards your decoys. It's what we do and it's what we love. Duck hunting fanatics with boots on the ground, eyes in the skies reports. And we get it from professional duck guides all across the country. We interview them for their top tips and tricks from their years of experience from the duck hunting blind. This is Duck Hunting Fanatics, and this is Eric Wilkes. Greetings, Duck Hunting Fanatics. Eric Wilkes here, and I have on the line with me today Captain Pete from DuckGuide.com. And Captain Pete, how you doing, man? So far, so good. All right. How was your season? I know uh, uh, we haven't done one of these podcasts in quite a bit, and so I'm glad we could reconnect. You know, how, how was your season this year? Pretty good. Uh, some things were real good, and some things were slow. Um, normally, we have a bunch of snow geese, and we didn't have them for the last couple of years. That's our weakest spot. Um, sea duck hunting, diver hunting was good. Uh, black ducks were good. Um, mergansers are good. I don't know if we're supposed to talk about that or not, but, um, sure. It, overall, a pretty good season. So would you say, you know, and I know you do, you do mainly, you know, saltwater, uh, sea ducks and, and you're way out on the East Coast out near the ocean. What's the big difference between hunting saltwater marshes from freshwater? Um, just about everything. We're, we're dealing with tides. We have a normal rise and fall of about four feet tides. Uh, the normal current between tides is five to six miles an hour. Uh, you get a storm and you can have twice that. Um, so we have to deal with tides. Uh, low tides uh, can be tough getting around. Um, but it, it's a completely different experience and it's pretty much completely different birds. There's a lot of birds we have in the saltwater that that you don't see often in freshwater brant. There's a saltwater seagoing goose, and someone corrected me one time that they had them in freshwater, but they had them coming to where we are. Uh, they don't they don't stay there. They're a saltwater bird. And, and black ducks are, there's a few of those everywhere, but a black duck is primarily a saltwater bird. And the big shortage of black ducks that they've had around the country is because black ducks is a saltwater bird. We have, we have and have had more black ducks in our area than they say exist in the country. And of course we have unusual birds, sea ducks. Uh, you don't, I mean, they get them up in the Great Lakes and they get a lot of them. Uh, but, uh, not so much in the freshwater around, uh, generally. Okay. And, you know, obviously, I mean, dealing with tide and, you know, I'm sure, you know, out there you got, you got wind, you got movement, um, coming from a guy that's, you know, maybe not used to that stuff. I'm sure that that makes shooting a little bit more of a challenge too, because I'm guessing you're, you know, in a boat, um, and you're, you know, moving around a little bit. So you've got all those other factors working against you, which would definitely for, for anybody that hasn't experienced it, it'd be something unique and that in, in and of itself would be a challenge just trying to aim a little more true and shoot. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but. Uh, it, it, you know, what would you say to a guy that is looking for something new, some, that, 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 words of encouragement uh, for maybe looking for a new experience or looking for something different or looking for that extra bit of a challenge? Well, we we have a lot of birds. I can say, in all honesty, we always have birds, some more than sometimes more than other. Uh, there's typically a lot of shooting. Um that's on the plus side. Uh, even pretty good shots average about 10 shots per bird. Um, if they shoot them when they're sitting on the water, it's more than that. Um, we we encourage people to shoot the birds while they're in flight. Some people ask if it's illegal to shoot them on the water. It's not, but um, 
it does we don't do well with people to chew them on the water. There's a, a kill zone on a sea duck or a diver about the size of your thumb when they're sitting on the water. Much better chance of doing it um in the air. Um it takes a while to figure out that you're shooting ten feet behind a bird. Um some of the problems with that are people that shoot trap and stuff like that. They're shooting lead, travels a whole different speed than steel if you're shooting steel. Um, so it's a challenge, but uh, the good news is birds like to get shot where we are. <laughs> that always makes it fun if they like to get shot. And, you know, would you say there's, there's less pressure on, on birds that are out your way? Well, I, I get the impression there is, uh, I don't, I don't go anywhere else. Uh, one of my guides uh, went up to the Detroit area um, and did some hunting, and I get the impression that we have less pressure than, than they do around there. And he noticed some differences. There's no, no movement to the decoys, and that's why people use mechanical decoys and all that kind of stuff. We, sure. we don't have a problem with movement, but uh, the – there's a lot of birds and there's a fair amount in fair amount of hunting, but there's a tremendous amount of area along the East Coast that no one's hunting. So, yeah, I would say generally speaking, we have lower pressure than inland. Well, that's good enough reason right there to, to you know, come out and experience a hunt with you. Because I know especially when you get down in the southern states and the migratory birds, when they get down through there, they've been shot at along every major flyway their entire journey south. So by the time they get in some of them southern states, they get pretty educated and get a little bit sketchy. So you do have to think a little bit more and be a little bit more tactical. So I would encourage anyone that, you know, if you have if you are looking for a new experience and maybe you um, uh, have a lot of pressure or you hunt in an area where there is a lot of pressure, uh, you know, go out and check out duckguide.com and, and talk with Captain Pete. And I know I'm sure he'd love to have you. Uh, now, Pete, I know you have some different theories about laying out your decoys. Now, this is specific as it applies to, you know, sea ducks or, or, or hunting, uh, uh, hunting out in the open ocean. So what is it exactly that you do or that your, your philosophy is maybe a little bit different than what some of the guys that are normal flatland type hunters that aren't hunting out over an open ocean? Well, there there's people in the area here, in the area I'll include the Chesapeake Bay, and and uh, we do have we do hunt over there occasionally, and and along the coast there's people that use long lines and stuff like that for uh, uh, for hunting. I don't do any of that. I experimented with it, and I was terribly unsuccessful with that. Uh, we don't put out the amount of decoys that you see up in the Great Lakes or even in the Chesapeake at times. When we do diver hunting out of a stationary blind, there's usually anywhere from 9 to 15 decoys, sea duck decoys, and a little bit less than that on divers. Uh, same thing for brant, anywhere from 9 to 12 brant go out at a time. Uh, the theory of the people that are putting out these long lines and sometimes, I don't know, 12 dozen, uh, they see those massive flocks and they're trying to get them and they're not going to come no matter how many decoys you put out. Uh, we do much better and I've been doing it for quite, quite a while and we do much better with smaller spreads of decoys. We have recently put in uh, layout boats and they're a lot of fun for the right person. They're not the most comfortable, and they're very weather sensitive, but about the same amount of decoys for that. Um, we don't try to spell things when we put out the decoys as Ys and Xs and Ls and all that stuff. We put them out in a natural-looking uh, flock. We mix different divers in. Divers typically push, uh, pitch to divers. We try to keep them well within range. The farthest decoy out from the blind should be maybe 30 feet, and uh, the closest decoy should be probably about, excuse me, 30 yards, not feet. Uh, the closest one probably 15 yards out, and uh, we encourage people to try to shoot them in the air, not passing shots. If they're going by, don't bother with them, but they should be decoying. 
uh, pitching in, and it's a time to shoot them. Nice, and that's good advice that really anybody, any any duck hunter, regardless of where you hunt, can take too. You know, um, what I pull out of that is, you know, sometimes less is more. Uh, I know guys that got these huge spreads. I mean, a hundred, two hundred, three hundred decoys in some cases, and sometimes you know, birds, especially ones that are educated and have been shot at, they catch on to that, and so. Uh, to your point, yeah. you know, I, I like that strategy. Let less is more, and then to your point as well, you know, instead of doing X's and Y's, I know guys try to lay them out sometimes in patterns, and you know, you want to you want to put yourself in the eyes of a bird. They want to see something that's going to look more natural. So try to make it more natural looking versus a, a pattern in how you set. Whether you're hunting over water or you're, and I know guys that hunt hunting cornfields. I've done that in the past, and. Uh, you, you know, just avoid that and make it look more natural. And I think, you know, you might, you have an opportunity to hopefully shoot more birds with that. And I've heard a couple of other guys say that too, right? Less is more, just try something different. So if you're, if you're not, you know, drawing in birds, uh, just change it up a bit, shake things up a bit, try something a little bit different and you, you might be surprised. You might get a little bit different result. Yeah, it's, that's definitely the way we feel about it. If somebody does go on the website I wrote a little article that there's more and more people going sea duck hunting because there's less and less puddle ducks. And I've gone over some of the stuff we just went over on there. That's not a sales pitch. It's for people hunting out on their own. Mm -hmm. um, sure. So, uh, but the shortage of birds that, that we've heard about, uh, is not accurate for our area. Um, and, I've heard other people say the same thing. I, I'm very questionable about the duck, uh, the duck guy, the, the person that con yeah, the person that hunts, I can't pronounce it, the person that counts ducks, the duck counter. I got it right. Um, <laughs> there can only be one. Mm -hmm. And, um, he goes to the same pond every year and if there's no ducks there, he says there's a shortage. There isn't really a shortage of ducks. As far as mallards go, if you come to Shinkertig, they're all over town. You have to stop the car and let them walk across in front. They're in the convenience stores. They're in the motels. Um, mallards are changing their location, becoming more domesticated, and that's all the way up and down the coast, including Florida. Uh, mallards, are they find out that uh, – if they go out in the marsh, there's crazy people out there with guns that try to kill them. If they stay in town, people feed them. On on Shinkatig, when you get your water bill, at the bottom it says it's illegal to shoot ducks. I feed ducks. I'm sorry, I'm not doing too good today. The water <laughs> bill says it's illegal to feed ducks, and they're all over town. They're in your yard. They're everywhere. Um, so, and in the populations change. And the areas of the population change. We get people from all over the country, and they tell us what's going on here and there. And uh, I, I'm all for limits. I, they've reduced our limit out here. Uh, they included sea ducks in with a regular duck limit. That's fine. Uh, we had a limit that was way over 20 birds if you can combine everything. Um, we're back into a, a six bird duck limit, you get five mergansers, you get two brant, you get a Canada goose, that's plenty of birds to shoot. Yeah, and, and it's a lot of fun, yeah. too, uh, in, in a given day, right? And, um, you know, and, and Pete, I, I do, I want to be respectful here of your time as well, and, and I want to thank you for being gracious with your time. You know, I want to continue this conversation uh, I'd love to speak with you about some dog training. I know you you hunt with dogs, and when you've got them out in that open ocean, they're, they're fighting the current, and they're doing some different things. So I'd love to talk to you, you know, next week or the next time we speak just about some dog training and kind of what you're doing there. And we'll get into some more strategies. But, you know, again, I want to thank you for, you know, taking your time to be here. Give everybody, you know, give your get, get, give a little elevator pitch here uh, Captain Pete, you know, how do people get a hold of you? How do they, how do they book a hunt with you? And what are the next steps? What do they need to do? Uh, go on duckguide.com and it's a pretty extensive website. Um, if you have any questions on the hunt, I can be reached. It's best by email, but I can be reached by phone and my number's on there. If you want to book a hunt, 
Jan's numbers on there. You give her a call and away we go. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for joining us today, Captain Pete. We looking for we graciously look forward to having you on the, another episode very soon. All right. Okay. Thank all you right. for having me. You bet. We are duck hunting fanatics. Knee deep in the duck blind. If it flies, it dies. <laughs> <laughs>